Hey guys, Brian's here. Today is Saturday, September 10th, 2022. Calendar spreads are one of my favorite option strategies to use. We will be reviewing these company NVIDIA and the trade that I opened on August 31st, 2022 right here, which was a Wednesday. Now I open up a non-directional calendar spread. If you don't know what a calendar spread is, just a combination of selling an option in a front month or selling a shorter DTE option. In other words, let's just say I was to sell the 150 call for this upcoming Friday, and then I purchase the 150 call for two weeks out. That's going to create a risk profile that looks something like this. And let's just say this is the current spot price right here. As long as the price hovers between here and here, which is referred to as your tense, in other words, as long as price remains within this zone, you profit from time decay or a rise in implied volatility. To illustrate that, this is what the risk profile will look like, and this is the tent in which I'm referring to. This is the current spot price right now for NVIDIA. So as you guys can see, if NVIDIA was to continue to rise and it returns back to the 150 strike price, that is the maximum profit at expiration for this calendar. In this case, the calendar that I opened on that day was the 150 puts calendar, meaning I shorted the 150 puts for September 16th, and then I bought the 150 put for August 21st, and that's going to create a structure that gives us positive positive theta as well as being long vega so we're long theta long vega and in that case and in this case when i first opened it the delta was pretty close to being neutral now the reason i open up a non-directional calendar in this case is because i did not think there was much of an edge to pick a direction in which i thought nvidia's stock price was going to go as we can see 150 is a key level on the chart as we can see a few touches here we can see how it acted as support back in late june early july and this is the first day price had come back to 150. whenever i see that i really like opening up non directional trades but instead of opening up an iron condor because i'm not comfortable opening up iron condors on volatile stocks such as nvidia you guys can see almost the worst case scenario happened to me the next day and that's something i want to highlight also you don't need to panic when you open up a non-directional trade and then the stock price makes a big move in this case this is not normal there was a breaking news event that happened right after the market closed so if we go in today and we actually look at the chart i opened it again when spot price is right around here and then we can see that it gapped down tremendously and then it continued to sell off. So the video was actually down over 10%, I believe. So let's actually check. This is where it closed the previous day and all the way down here it was actually down 12% at one point. And that is disgusting. I was actually very annoyed and upset because Another reason I opened the trade is that I had actually hit my weekly goal right around here for the week because I had some huge trades in the SPX that made a very nice return on profit. And I was actually probably boredom trading on Wednesday. I was just looking for other places to put the capital. I didn't do enough research or didn't really do enough of an analysis in my opinion. I just saw it was at 150. I ended up checking a few other metrics and I was like, okay, this looks like a good calendar to put on. And it was a less than 16 days till expiration calendar, which inherently is going to be a little bit riskier than going something like 25 30 days but the trade-off is if you go too far out in time you're going to have to wait too long for the return on your investment and i really just wanted something that would give a return within seven trading days or so so i intentionally chose a calendar spread that expires within two weeks however once the video gaps down the next day the simple adjustments or simple solution you can make to calendar spreads is just to open up another tent so if you first open up one calendar and let's just say this is your risk profile right here once the spot price breaks below your tents you can always open up another calendar for another key strike price and that's going to increase your risk profile or it's going to increase your profitability zone covering a much larger area as long as the spot price remains within these two tents now you will profit especially by expiration what we're looking at is the time in which i opened up the spread so again august 31st i open up this non-directional 16 days till expiration 150 put calendar it's a small trade and i'm just looking for 20 percent profit at first i was looking for reasons to get long but price action said said otherwise what i meant by that was 150 was support and i see that support was holding so i wanted to go long however on the larger time frame you can't ignore this aggressive downtrend and you don't want to be the first buyer just because you think something is going to bounce you need some sort of confluence or you need some sort of confirmation if you're looking for a bigger swing trade i need something else to show that there should be reasons to buy and hold so the confliction between us being at a 
good level for NVIDIA, as the chart says. On top of that, the fact that usually after an aggressive sell-off, price is going to stall out for a bit before it decides if it's going to either reverse or if it's going to continue in its downtrend. I like to capitalize on that time decay as price is just consolidating. On top of that, a couple of the reasons that I have was the gamma exposure for the short dated option. So again, the gamma exposure for the rest of September was showing that 150 was a very strong negative gamma strike as well as an absolute gamma strike. And there was just a lot of exposure at that level. As we take a look at it right here, I noticed that there really wasn't much interest in the video being below 140 for the month, or at least at the time in which I took this screenshot for the gamma exposure. 150 was massive and it was difficult to ignore this as I was expecting again price to kind of stall around this area even though my bias was saying that we would likely bounce. I did not want to be naked in call options and I wasn't prepared to buy more equity. I actually hold shares in the video, but I really was contemplating if I want to either buy more shares, if I think it was going to bounce, or I just want to profit off of the time decay. And at the end of the day, I realized that the better solution for me was just to open up a non-directional call calendar and then add another tenth depending on which direction price went. What we're looking at right here is the archived chart on the quant trading app platform for the Thursday. So this right here was the Wednesday in which the trade was open. So I had a little bit of an extra confluence as it was holding the quant trading app buy zone. And this is letting us know that statistically, this tends to be a good place for NVIDIA to reverse or bounce if it sells off into this level. So that caught my attention. That's usually what's going to catch my attention before I look to analyze a little further. I'm not the type of person that uses any type of scanners anymore. A few years ago, I used to be on Finviz all the time, pre-market after hours. I was always doing a ton of research, trying to find the next company that I wanted to trade for the following day. These days, I just rely on the quant trading app platform to let me know if I should investigate a little bit further into price action, do a little bit more of analysis to see if I want to either buy more equity or put or put on some sort of options position. So you guys can see 150, I had this confluence here. I had the confluence from the gamma exposure and then also looking at the chart. So, oh yeah, I had a screenshot right here. So showing that 150, there's a decent amount of confluence around the area, at least enough to believe that price is just going to consolidate around here for a few days. However, what we can't account for are breaking news events. And that's generally the reason most people avoid trading high beta stocks like NVIDIA and stick to things like the SPY, the NASDAQ, the SPX, any derivative of the S&P 500, because you don't have to worry about the S&P 500 being down 10% overnight or being up 10% overnight. And that's something that is very likely to happen with individual stocks because they're very susceptible to breaking news. But even what can be considered almost a worst case scenario, which is a breaking news event literally a few hours right after you open a trade and then a massive sell off on a huge company. I want to let you guys know this trade was only down about 30% at the lows right here. And I ended up buying two lots of this. So I was in two of the 150 calendar. So if we pull this up right here, this would be the 150 put calendar as I showed you guys earlier. And I was in two lots. So I'll just bump this up so you guys can see exactly how much capital I was using. Using about $1,730 as it was intended to be a very small trade for me. And again, I was just looking for maybe 250 bucks or so over the next five trading days. So for my account size and my risk allocation, this is not a very risky trade. I ended up closing this leg out, unfortunately. So I had to realize a $300 loss as it was down 30% the following day. But what I ended up doing right after price sold off and it hit a certain point is I just added another tent. So you guys can see this tent, I'm currently up about 100 $158 right now or 16%. And I'm now looking if I if I took my profit at the same 20%, it means overall, I would have lost about 10% on the trade, which is not a major loss considering this was a horrible case scenario. If I decide to hold this for 30%, it means this tense will negate the other tense and I'll end up losing no money, even though this again was a worst case scenario here. My reasons for closing the trade is if we were to jump back to this, I believe I added right here. So I added the 140 put calendar for $4 and 79 cents. And then later that day, I ended up closing out the calendar for a 30% loss. So I had to realize this loss mostly because at this point, price was way beyond the tent. And that's something I generally don't like to hold because I don't want to leave it up to faith or chance or hoping that price will return to the tent. However, in this case, it was an extremely harsh sell off and 150 was still a very key level for the month of September. So as we can see, price is fighting to return to that level. So I could have held both of them. In a sense, if I was to hold both of them, you guys can see that the combination of the two of these would actually put me up about 20%. So with the two lots, I would actually be closing them out or I would have closed them out on Friday, which would have hit my goal. And we're talking about a trade that was open here 
and close out uh, a week and a half later if I had continued to hold both calendars. But instead, because I realized the loss on 150, now I'm holding the 140 and I'm looking to just squeeze a little bit more PL out of the trade. There's many different approaches you guys can have. Another thing I could have done is I could have re entered the 150 call calendar here. I could have bought more equity as we came back down to this level, or I could have just actually purchased a naked call option at that point or enter in some sort of bull debit spread because there was enough confluence to say that we would probably not go lower in the short term. But because the position was so small, I actually ended up neglecting it this week. And that's something I'll remind myself in the future. Another reason why I realized the loss on the trade is these are the quantifiable levels again. And, and once we broke below this intraday zone right here, it was just looking way too ugly. And at this point, you never know. Again, it was a fundamental catalyst in the stock. I believe the news was there was going to be a ban on Nvidia selling the semiconductor chips to China. And, and I can imagine that would affect their revenue and the next earnings or the next few quarters earnings. So fundamentally, there was probably a ton of investors that were liquidating some of their positions. And in that case, you never know because we could have easily continued to sell all the way off to 124, even wherever were the high, the next high gamma strikes. What made me a little bit concerned is when I did the gamma exposure analysis, I know there really wasn't much gamma exposure below these levels. And that made me a little bit nervous because it, it meant I didn't really know where the next clear support was going to be. And I don't rely on support just from technical analysis. In other words, just from going at the chart and then drawing a line here and may maybe seeing that there was another support here. Once this broke, the thought process could have been we could be going to 120, maybe even 110. And I don't rely just on those. I need something else to kind of confirm that there's probably going to be some sort of support if it's the gamma exposure, maybe if it's a volume profile, maybe if it's even the quant trading app levels. But in this case, we were exceeding all of the support levels that I had left on the chart. So I was watching it here. And the fact that the way it broke down below this level is not something that I really like to see. And again, 30% is generally where you want to cap out a loss if you're looking to make a 20% return on your investment for something such as a non-directional calendar spread. Because your win rate with non-directional calendar spreads, especially once you add the other tents, is going to be very high especially if you open them around key levels such as the 150 was so you can risk a little bit more even if you're looking to make 20 percent and i know if you're new to trading this type of way that seems a little bit weird you're actually you have a wider stop loss generally you want to have maybe a 10 percent stop loss if you're looking to make 30 percent or so but for this style of trading you can actually give it a little bit more room again because your probability of success is going to be much higher than your traditional picking in direction or buying naked options now let's take a look at how the PL actually performed as the trades were open. So as you guys can see, it was opened right here. And then the following day it was down 29, 30% or so. And now we can see that this trade is now coming back into the green as the video is returning to the 150 strike. And then if we actually pull this up right here, you guys can see this was the 140 tenths that was open. And this one started returning on a profit pretty much right after the first day in which it was open. And it's just been continuing to uh, increase in value. And that is something that this one is helping offset the loss from this one. But as you guys can see, if I remained in both of them, I would have been hitting my profit target. If we take a look at my current risk profile right now, this is the thinkorswim platform. You guys can see I'm in two lots of these, currently up to $158. And if I were to jump forward to, let's just say the 13th, which would be this week, uh, Tuesday here, I'll end up pulling in about $246 if NVIDIA is still in this area. Now I'm at risk as if NVIDIA continues to go up to 150 and if it ends the week around 150, I'll actually be forfeiting most of my profits. So I'm going to need to make a, some sort of a decision here if I want to take the profits early in the week or if I still think it's going to hover around this area. Ideally, I would like it to pull back to 140. And if we jumped to the Wednesday and the video pulled back to 140, you guys can see I'll actually be close to my break even around that point right here. And obviously, if I held it into expiration on Friday, I could actually end up being green overall in the trade. So a little bit of a decision to be made. If it ends up being too cumbersome or too much of a, of a problem for me, I'll just realize whatever gains there are. I was considering adding adding back the 150 tenths, but I generally don't like to make those many adjustments to such short dated contracts. I'd much rather maybe just take my chances with a naked call option if I see some sort of intraday bullish setup. And if I realize maybe $200 intraday on a scalp or so, I'll add that to the PL from here and it ends up being an overall net gain on the video over last week and this week. And that's just something that I'm looking to achieve. So to review the individual calendars, I like to save things in terms of one lot. So just one contract, even though I was in two of them, 
because I like to save the Greeks that way. So as we can see right here, my theta was about around $10 and the Vega was around $10. The implied volatility at the time was 55%. And we can see that the implied volatility is now 48%. So even though the implied volatility has dropped, all that's done is just shrunk the profitability zone for this calendar because the break evens when it first was opened was 139, which means it accounted, the tents look something like this all the way out here all the way up to 163 and now it's lost about three dollars up here and it's lost about almost the same amount down here so it's just shrunk the calendar a little bit and that's just because the implied volatility has come down when i first opened the trade the implied volatility was was 57 percent for the front month and then it ended up spiking if we were to jump to the one uh to the 140, we can see that the next day it was 61%. So that's something that's also not good. The implied volatility jumping that much on the front month is going to harm your PL. But then when I open up the, the uh, new tents, you're going to benefit from that because now you're shorting at higher implied volatility. So when this implied volatility decreases, that's going to help you. As you guys can see, the back month increased by 50, this was 58%, and the day before it was only 57%. So the back month increased. A little over 1.6% or so in uh, implied volatility, but the front month increased almost 3%. So you're benefiting from, but you're benefiting when you open up a non directional calendar spread and then the spot price drops and you open up another tent that's actually beneficial to you in both ways. But in many instances, whenever you open up a non directional calendar spread and then the spot price drops, implied volatility rises when you open up the other tents, you're generally going to benefit from that. Again, it depends on your term structure. In this case, my back month all the way out here was not as sensitive to the spike in implied volatility. And I, I did that intentionally because I didn't want my back month to be sensitive, again, because this is a high beta stock such as NVIDIA. If I'm running the SPX or the SPY, I generally won't have my term structure so wide. I make them a little bit tighter, but that's just a little bit of a Tip for you guys again if you open up a non-directional calendar and the stock price drops drastically because of some sort of breaking news all you have to do is just open up another tent monitor your pnl monitor your greeks decide if you want to close the original uh, tent out you can always add another tent to the bottom side and you're essentially just looking to move the tent around the spot price and eventually stop the stock price will consolidate within your tents hopefully before expiration and you'll meet your goal obviously when i first opened it i could have also opened up a double calendar which is something that i will do sometimes but in this case i didn't want to do that because as i said my bias was actually thinking that the video was going to jump over the next week or so so you don't want to open up a double calendar like this and then the spot price ends up bouncing because then you have to close out this trade and then add the other tents all the way up here. And then you're opening up yourself to a little bit more risk. If you're unsure about the spot price and you still think it's going to continue in a certain direction, in this case, NVIDIA sold off from 160 all the way down to 150. If you think it's going to continue to sell, you can just open up a double calendar like this. If we take a look at the PL from, in this case here, it would have cost about 10 bucks. So the combination of both calendars, which makes sense. The next day, this trade was down a lot less than the 30%. And then you guys can see it's, it's up right now. And then more than likely within this week, it's going to hit the 20-25% return as you would expect on something like this well within the time here. So in the future, something to keep in mind. But again, my reasons for not wanting to open it this way is because I wanted to leave room for if we gapped down to open up another tent or if the spot price bounced, I would have opened up another tent around here and then I would have let it consolidate in that range. The only thing that I did in this case is I closed the 150 and that's not something that I would have wanted to do. Actually, sorry about that. This would actually be a put also if I was to completely uh, mirror what I was in. So it's going to end up being about the same thing here. Not much change if it was the put on call because at the end of the day, it was at the money. But hopefully that example that I just made would help explain a question you might have thought of. Why don't why not just open double calendars? It, the main reason is because you're opening yourself up. Yes, you have a higher probability of profit but you're opening up yourself to be a lot more sensitive to Vega because once you add two calendars, the Vega is going to be double what it would be as if you're in a single calendar, which means if implied volatility was to decrease, you're going to deal with the shrinkage of the middle of your tents. In this case, you won't have to worry about that. But what I mean by that is let's just say you open up some sort of calendar like this. You guys can see as implied volatility drops, it means even if the spot price remains in between your two tents, there's a risk that you still won't make any money because as implied volatility is decreasing, it it's shrinking the uh, the width of your tents right there and your slope in the middle is going to end up causing a negative performance on your PL. So that's one of the risks. So every strategy has a time and place for it. The more versatile option is to just go with the single tent and then just add the one that you need. Decide if you want to close out the original one or decide if you then want to hold the both of them. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to like the video if you learned something. And if you want to see more content like this, let me know. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.